There is no doubt, really, that thermal storage works. The planet Earth has been using it for over 4 billion years. If it did not, we'd have no solid and liquid iron cores, which generate the magnetosphere to protect us from the radiation and erosion from solar wind. Life on Earth wouldn't even exist to ask the question. So yes, it works. Modern lithium cobalt batteries are expensive, have short lifespans, and are difficult and expensive to salvage and reuse. We'll always need some equivalent for mobile applications, like car batteries or remote installations. A very recent and accidental discovery has given us a road to lithium sulfur batteries. They have at least twice the effective lifetime of extent lithium cobalt batteries and three times the power density. They will also eliminate child labor mining operations to obtain cobalt, and more cutting-edge research from those discoveries is optimistic about replacing lithium with sodium. Both sulfur and sodium are widely available and cheap. An existing Prius battery costs between $2,200 to $4,100 to replace, whereas a Tesla runs between $13,000 and $20,000 with a 10 to 20 year lifespan. If they lasted 40 years with triple the range and cost half as much, that would be good. Nevertheless, chemical batteries are not the answer for grand storage solutions. They lack the capacity to power a town or city for more than roughly six hours. Non-fossil fuel energy is already in use. Norway manages 98.4% renewable energy. Brazil gets 84.1% from renewables. New Zealand has 80% of its requirements from renewables. Sweden has 68.4%, and rounding out the top five, Canada obtains 67.7% from such sources. The next five are Colombia at 64.8, Venezuela at 60.9, Portugal at 59.7, Chile 48.2, and Germany at 44.5. The United States only manages 12.6% from renewables, less than half of Mexico's 26%. This seems to be because the existing energy sector is focused on the status quo and likes making money at any cost. And without further financial investment, irrespective of harm to the environment. The public perception seems to be that whenever Congress members and senators are for sale to the highest lobbyists and bidder, there is no real chance for change to occur. Remember to vote. Nevertheless, there will be more renewable energy development when storage becomes more readily available. Batteries, however, are simply not up to the job. Converting wind, solar, or geothermal to electricity has inevitable losses. No process is 100% efficient. There are places, Iceland for instance, but many other countries and cities that have central heat distribution systems called district heating. It is present in many major cities in the United States, such as New York, the biggest steam system in the world, Denver since 1880, San Francisco is over two square miles in area, Minneapolis the biggest hot water system in North America, Boston 90 years plus, and more. This warms businesses, offices, residences, and from all the heat that would otherwise be released straight into the environment with no further benefit. As an example, a data center has to cool thousands and thousands of CPUs that manage the world's interconnectivity. They're located in every city and use massive numbers of megawatts just for cooling. Dumping it into a district heating for a town is very useful and essentially free. Just about every process generates heat and it can all be reused in some way. Even solar photovoltaics are heated by sunlight, and beyond a certain temperature, heat can decrease their efficiency by about 25%. Your 100-watt panel then outputs only 75 watts. Worse yet, its lifetime is decreased. A panel that stays under its rated operating temperature, usually 77 degrees Fahrenheit, lasts up to 50 years, but only 30 or less when it's constantly overheated, typically 149 degrees Fahrenheit. With a well-insulated tank, aka a thermal battery, water-cooled solar cells could provide much of the hot water needs for a hotel, home, or business. It's more expensive to install, but ultimately pays for itself. On the other hand, instead of converting energy such as hydroelectric, coal, fossil fuel, wind, solar, or geothermal into electricity, and then converting electricity into heat, direct utilization like the above example is possible on a much larger scale if we store heat directly. 
The efficiency then approaches 90% compared to converting to electricity at only 25% efficiency. Bakers and cooks have been using thermal batteries for centuries, stoking fires in stone ovens, heating them up, and then cooking them for hours or days with very little fuel needed to sustain the temperature. This includes everything from tandoori to pizza ovens. About 46% of our average energy budget goes toward heating buildings. If we have waste heat, let's not waste it, since most of it is still generated by dirty sources such as coal, petrochemicals, and even natural gas, we'd be doing ourselves a service by not throwing it away and then expending more energy to make heat later. That's where thermal batteries come into the picture. Low-level heat is useful for dehydrating foods like banana chips, figs, raisins, dates, etc., or industrial processes such as brick making. Captured waste heat from any industrial process can be reused, decreasing fossil fuel use with just some rudimentary low-cost infrastructure investments. Water batteries. Thermal batteries come in a few different styles, such as water batteries like the new one being built in Sweden that will hold 56 million liters at just below the boiling point, meaning they can store 200 megawatts of energy. They will be able to provide 2.6 gigawatt hours of heating. This is in response to Putin and Russia playing games with natural gas availability. Sand batteries. Another type is the sand battery. Sand has a higher specific heat capacity than water, and it can be heated to temperatures much higher than the boiling point of water. In fact, sand batteries heated to 600 degrees Celsius or 1100 Fahrenheit, even in a small cylinder unit of just 4 meters or 13 feet across and 7 meters or 23 feet tall, could store 8 megawatts, as demonstrated by Finnish company Polar Night Energy. This is essentially a grain silo filled with air piping and sand that is literally dirt cheap to build with available off-the-shelf components. It requires no new technology, no expensive electrolytes or rare metals, no huge innovations. It is easy to build and use as long as you have district heating in place or some use for the stored energy. Aluminum or carbon fiber thermal batteries. Aluminum and carbon fiber can be heated similarly to sand. Aluminum alloys can be heated to about 600 degrees Celsius, and carbon fiber can be even higher without deteriorating. Like sand batteries, they have no moving parts and should last for decades with little to no maintenance. Naturally, they are more expensive than sand. Another variation is the sort designed with custom materials to retain and transfer heat, such as heatcrete, which may suit specific applications. This one can be heated and cooled with steam, water, or other high temperature liquids reaching temperatures over 2400 degrees Celsius. In terms of cost, heatcrete designs are modular, and so the price varies with capacity. Suitable for very small applications or huge solar wind farms, each unit is designed to fit in a 20-foot shipping container and potentially transportable from location to location if that need ever arises. However, bespoke materials are always likely to be more expensive than sand, particularly if that sand is salvaged from waste from construction sites, making it cheaper and more environmentally sensitive. It does have advantages, though. If used for concentrated solar power energy storage that currently use molten salt or liquid metals, in that it can be 30 to 50 percent cheaper to use. It has virtually no maintenance and fewer worries about your heat transfer medium freezing within the system during problems, since heat transfer is accomplished with synthetic oil or steam. Phase change. Finally, there are phase change batteries. By way of example, ice at zero degrees Celsius requires more energy to increase its temperature by one degree than water at the same temperature. Changing phase is what requires all the extra energy because you are breaking or making molecular bonds, and it works the same in either direction. Now, water may not be useful for solar energy phase changes because these changes occur at freezing or boiling points, but paraffin, also known as sealing wax, changes at 37 degrees Celsius from a solid to a liquid, so this would be a good material to exploit. There are all sorts of materials that respond at different temperatures, so one may be selected for virtually any application. Paraffin stores 3.4 times as much energy as an equal mass of water and 16 times as much for the same mass of concrete. 
On the whole, it is not a bad material for household use and is reasonably inexpensive. It is almost certainly not useful for industrial scale operations. Thermal batteries will never be the solution because their utility doesn't cross all boundaries. They can, however, form an important part of the ultimate solution and make a major contribution to decarbonizing our energy usage now. Europe has received a big wake-up call about how tightly they're tied to petrochemical products, so they are very inspired to start making adjustments in sourcing and usage. Let's hope it doesn't take a stupid war to wake up the rest of the world, and that we get this problem solved before the planet gets too hot.